So as we uh, continue through the course and go through the plant kingdom, uh, we're up to the point now where we have got into the vascular plants and have talked about a little bit, at least about the, the terophyta or the ferns and their general life cycle. But instead of just continuing to go through life cycles, I think we should stop a little bit here and start to just talk about plants themselves and plant structure. Um, we can't go into all the detail. The more I've kind of uh, tried to outline stuff to cover, I realized you know, this isn't a, a botany course, um, th and there is so much material that you really um, need to cover to cover all the different aspects of plant structure that we can't, there's no way to cover them in just an organismal course that covers fungi and animals and all different other organisms and genetics and inheritance and so many other, other topics. So I'm just kind of give you the overview as well. So now we're just kind of looking for vascular plants. We're talking about their organization of, of a body plant. So we'll talk about some of the structure of the plants themselves, and they're going to be all different differences un that are unique to the different groups. Um, and then uh, there'll be different tissue types, but mostly they're all going to share the same uh, tissue types and the same types of cells that, that are um, creating those tissues. And they'll just be organized mostly in different ways. So uh, we're talking about the terophytes. Remember, this is the, the group that are the ferns. And then the you know the gymnosperms and angiosperms that's not that's not a, a phyla um, but it's the way that they're typically classified. These are the seed plants and they're sometimes referred to as the embryophytes because they have seeds. So little embryos inside a seed. We're going to get to the seeds next because um, we're going to start into the the gymnosperms. Now so we'll start with the structure of seeds and we'll go into gymnosperm structure and their life cycle. But and then we'll talk about flowers and, and all that with uh, angiosperms. So. Plants have uh, essentially these main organs. If we talk about an organ level organization, uh, roots, stems, and leaves. And collectively, uh, often the stems and leaves are referred to as the shoots. So we have roots, shoots, and they. Uh, so the stems and leaves make up the, the shoots. And, and flowers would also be a part of this, and so would fruits as well. They'd all, all be part of the, the shoots. Now, each of these roots, stems, and, and leaves are made up of these three types of tissues. And these three tissue types are ground tissue, vascular tissue, and dermal tissue. All right, so our dermal tissue is our sort of outer layer. Um, and this is where we have our epidermal cells that are then going to secrete a cuticle. So remember that's the waxy cuticle. That's not a living layer. It's just a, a protective covering over the outside of the organism to prevent desiccation. That was part of the one of the last few um, talks on adaptations to land. So the waxy cuticles produced by these cells, they also will then have, I, I mentioned the, the stomata, these are going to be the pores, you know, remember, or openings. But obviously the pores is an opening, but they're gonna be cells structuring that, guard cells and other cells. So guard cells that allow gas exchange to occur. Uh, and then there's also cells and special structures called trichomes, which are these sort of hair-like structures that uh, grow on uh, plant surfaces to help protect them from uh, being eaten by insects. Uh, so it's, what, it's one of the protective structures that they have. Uh, the thing we're gonna be focusing mostly in on are the, the vascular tissues, but, so, but we're just gonna talk about each of them. Um, and so I'm gonna do vascular last because that's what we're gonna be focused on. Ground tissue, all right, ground tissue is made up of a uh, material called parenchyma Colenchyma and sclerenchyma. So some interesting names, right? Now the parenchyma is good, good to know. Most abundant really type of cell. So these are the cell types that make up the different tissues. Um, and the parenchyma, uh, these are the photosynthetic cells.
people often think, you know, we'll talk about plants being photosynthetic. So, you know, plants do photosynthesis. But when we start to think about plant tissues um, and the cells, start to think, well, every, every cell in the plant uh, carries out photosynthesis. But obviously the cells in the roots are not going to carry out photosynthesis because they're, they're underground. They're not exposed to, to light. Uh, and some other structural cells and other things are, they have other jobs. They do other sorts of things. They're not specialized for photosynthesis. It's these particular cells, these uh, parenchyma cells, uh, specialized to do that. Typically, we're finding these in leaves. Okay. So leaves are made up. So this is going to be a leaf structure. And the leaf is going to be made up largely of parenchyma tissue. Now, the parenchyma tissue and this other type called sclerenchyma tissue are going to then be associated with the vascular tissue, which we'll, we'll get to in a second. So then we have uh, another type here called cholenchyma tissue. Um, this is supporting tissue. It supports areas of active growth. So as cells are dividing and the plant is growing, cholenchyma tissue helps support those uh, growth areas. Growth areas of, remember, uh, I find another color here to kind of highlight this. Areas of active, this, uh, it's a very sloppy, sloppily written word, uh, active growth, okay? And that is important because that's in contrast to the sclerenchyma tissue. So the cholenchyma is supporting. The sclerenchyma is also going to be supporting tissue, right? So it supports growth, uh, areas, that, uh, areas where the growth has already stopped. So supports tissue areas where the growth has now stopped. So after there's growth, now the sclerenchyma tissue uh, is there supporting it. Usually a matrix that supports often the vascular tissues um, that are going to be necessary for conducting nutrients and water and all sorts of things then through uh, the plants. Okay. So dermal tissue, uh, the ground tissue, which kind of makes up the, the supporting uh, material and uh, photosynthetic material. And then we have the vascular uh, cells um, and the vascular tissue. So talk about vascular plants. That's kind of like the point is that I was just going to talk about these and that was it. But I thought, no, we should probably cover all these other things all really at the same time to kind of kind of put them together. But this was really the, uh, the focus. So vascular tissues. Generally, we talk about vascular tissues as well being broken down into uh, different types as well, which I'll, I'll get to in a second. Um, but there's different cell types that make up the vascular tissue. So we have tracheids and vessel elements. Both of these are cells that are tube-like cells that grow. Now, the, uh, the tracheids, um, oops, I broke that off there. Um, Tracheids are these specialized cells that start to form. Um, I'm trying to draw this here in a second. My pen isn't working. They're very sort of narrow tube like cells. So, tracheid are narrow tube like cells. Um, and then um, when they mature, essentially the cells die and they kind of hollow out. All right. So they, they become hollow cells uh, and they're, they're much finer. The other types of cells, the ones referred to here as the vessel elements. So we got tracheids. I got to do something to fix my uh, pens here for not to... Uh, Writing this wrong. There we go. Tracheids, vessel elements. Vessel elements are going to be a little bit different. 
uh, they have a little bit more to them. Okay, so the vessel elements uh, as cells are going to stack like this. So one of these here in this little stack is a vessel element cell. The vessel element cells uh, are going to have really thick um, cell walls, uh, but they're going to have thin areas in the cell wall. So areas where the cell wall is really thinned out. It's not an actual hole, um, but these very thin areas are called pits. And they're going to allow, as these vessels are organized into tubes, and, and sort of like the tubes are all like right next to each other, it's going to allow for then movement, you know, uh, between between them like this. There's also going to be movement through the tubes, and which we'll talk about then uh, in a second here. But the pits allow that sort of movement to occur. All right. Uh, so then the vessel elements kind of stack up you know, like this, um, uh, and at the ends of each of them. So if we were to then look, look here at the end. You know, of a, a vessel element like that, there are then going to be um, a plate. Uh, and so it's a perforated plate. And that plate will have little uh, openings in it so that then, as they move along here, liquid can uh, flow through them. All right. So these structures are part of the xylem. So the tracheids. Get another color here so we can put here. The tracheids and the vessel elements are part of the tissue called xylem. And then we get um, supporting material that is then going to kind of coat, you know, the outside, you know, of these uh, to become. The lignin, I mentioned this in a previous talk as well, to become lignified. Uh, and this uh, creates a, a very thick or a very tough coating on the outside that supports it. And so that d doesn't only just support the tube itself, but it's what supports the plant as it grows. So as we get into talking about plants uh, and trees especially, but we'll have groups of plants called woody plants. And the woody plants will if you're familiar with wood, uh, it is xylem tissue, but it is essentially made up of these sort of uh, elements. Both of them are made of live cells that then grow and form these tube-like structures, then die. So then the cells are not living themselves. It's their cell walls that are left behind. And then these little um, sort of holes in some ends of them that start to connect the the cells together into these big long tubes, which can then extend long distances through the plant. Uh, and then these little pits in the sidewalls that can also allow movement back and forth. And so you have these little bit larger um, vessel elements and a little bit smaller uh, tracheids. They're both conducting, kind of like a straw, conducting liquid, you know, up typically from the roots up to the plant. And so that's kind of the, really the main job of the xylem. Xylem is water transport and minerals, which are dissolved in the water, uh, up. And that's going to be from the roots. So here we have a type of root. Uh, so let's look at the root. This one's technically referred to as a tap root. Uh, a tap root is kind of like, say, like a carrot. Um, it, it's kind of very thick. Uh, and it just extends down deep into the soil and it has some very small side branches on it. Um, the roots serve the job of absorbing the nutrients and then the roots can also store uh, nutrients as well. So that's what, you know, so the root plant, often people call them, that they actually have, our big roots become very, very large because they're storing a lot of nutrients. Now all roots do, but uh, the, some, some do far more so, you know, than others. Right, and then there's tissue that's inside the root uh, that really carries out that job. Um, and that's sort of uh, well, something we'll get into more so later as we talk about some of the different groups of plants. Uh, so now we have this other type of tissue, right? So we said that vascular tissue 
is really going to be made up of, of two major types, uh, which you probably, uh, I think I've mentioned already a few times, xylem, and then there's also tissue called, so this is an extension over here, called phloem. All right, so the cells that make up uh, the phloem uh, are alive. So they're always alive. I mean, obviously, all, all cells are alive at some point. It's just that the xylem cells that make the vessel elements and tracheids die when they mature. So they grow to form the structures they're supposed to form, and then the cells die and just leave the uh, sort of cell wall and lignum behind. The phloem cells stay alive. So they're alive at maturity. They're always alive. But they're a little bit different. So these cells then they lose uh, nucleus and ribosomes. Uh, so they don't express new genes. Uh, and so they're going to require other cells to help them out. All right, so with these um, phloem tissue, we really have then really two main cell types. They're ones called sieve cells. And then the, those supporting cells uh, for them, um, which are called companion cells, and that help them out. So the sieve cells are these, the ones that are, are losing their nucleus. Uh, and then the companion cells have a nucleus. They're also part of this, and they're the ones that are going to help out the sieve cells. Now, the phloem job is to transport Uh, wearing out. To transport the, the nutrients. So this is the organics um, that are from photosynthesis, really. So that means photosynthesis is occurring in the leaves. Right, so leaves are the major photosynthetic organs of the plant. The leaves are then going to have a lot of this parenchyma tissue in it. The leaves are typically have a lot of surface area, so they could absorb a lot of light, light at a variety of different wavelengths. Photosynthesis is going to take place in these parenchyma cells, and then the organic molecules constructed by absorbing carbon dioxide through the stoma, right? So thermal guard cells. It will then be able to pull that into the Calvin cycle and then connect them together to make G3P molecules, which can then be used to make sugar molecules uh, later on. Those organic molecules and nutrients will then move through the phloem and be distributed through the rest of the plant. At the same time, the plant is going to be absorbing water from the soils, and then the roots are going to be pulling up those uh, minerals with the water and then distributing that upward to the rest of the plant. So you kind of have the two things, xylem tissue and phloem tissue, moving liquids through the plant in a series of tubes, the xylem tubes being essentially dead tubes, um, that move the water, but the phloem being alive and transporting the nutrients th through these sieve cells with their companions, right? and then moving that, that material through them. So that is, like I said, there, this is not we don't have the the um, the time in our course uh, to spend on er everything and all the real the real details um, uh, of these because we have so many other topics to cover. So uh, I'm just going to end up. This here talking about some of the things we're kind of filling in with the anatomy here of this uh, little plant that I've been referring to uh, throughout. So we have the leaf, I'm oh, sorry, we have the leaf up here, and then we have the root. We said that the roots, the stems, and the leaves. So that's what we have here, right, is obviously then the stem. Okay, so we have the roots, stems, and the leaves. And then there's some other, um, other terms to kind of fill in here. So just so you can be a little more familiar with it. So at the tip of the growth, we're always going to have an apical meristem, right, where all the cell division rapidly takes place. And this can be called an apical bud, right, where there's going to be a lot, a lot of growth. 
Now there's growth that can happen also off the sides of the shoots, typically in areas where the, the leaves are coming out of. Right here, And these would be other buds. Uh, and these are axillary buds. So axillary buds off the sides of the shoot, the apical bud off the very top or tip uh, of the shoot. And you also have another apical meristem down at the, the bottom of the, the root, you know, as well. Uh, we have then connecting the leaf to the stem is the structure called a petiole. So very flat, often wide uh, surface area for the photosynthesis. And then as the material is produced there, it then is transported through that petiole into the stem, where then it can go down and or up around the rest of the, the plant, distributing the, the nutrients. Um, the areas where there's a couple other terms, because these have come up uh, from time to time, and they'll probably come up as we talk about the other group. So it's just good to kind of pull, pull them in right now. The places along the stem where you see the roots, so you can see, like, you know, the, the sorry, the, the leaves are growing out of the stem at certain sites. And what we'll find in different groups of plants have different patterns where they uh, are right alongside one another or they're alternating, and there's sorts of different ways that this occurs. But where that uh, site is, where the leaves are, are kind of coming off the stem, a lot of uh, trouble with these today. Um, where the leaves are coming off the stem, uh, these areas are called nodes. Right, so a node, what's a node? A node is this, the region of the stem where the leaves are growing off of the stem. And then there's these regions here, the regions where uh, I could find something very different, maybe a color, just because I'm having so many different things going on here. Purplish. Um, so the region between the leaves, uh, those are called internodes. Internodes. Okay. So go through the whole thing. The tip you got the apical bud, uh, and so or the meristem or, or growth here. Uh, so we come down to a node. We have leaves uh, growing off it. Really, there's a petiole sticking off and then the leaf kind of at the end. Then there's an internode region where there are no leaves. And then it goes back to a node, internode, node, internode. And then eventually we get to the root you know, of the plant. Uh, and then the root will also have branches as well. But, but depending on the type of root, it may be highly branched and very shallow along the um, surface of the soil, uh, or it might go really deep depending on the environment they live in, the type of plant, and a variety of other, other sorts of factors. Um, those are the main ones now. We're going to talk about a lot of terminology and uh, sort of the anatomy of the, the seed and of, of a, a seed cone and then of flowers and, and some aspects where we'll take some cross sections of the stems and then look at some of these tissues. So we're going to see a lot of these terms again. This isn't the only time that uh, they're being brought up. This is sort of more the introduction to the terms and the, and uh, kind of connecting it kind of with the actual plant itself. And then later as we look at tissue cross section, so like uh, I'll be drawing like a slice through the stem and labeling, you know, this is xylem and this is phloem and this is how it's arranged in different types of angiosperms. For example, monocot versus dicot angiosperms. Um, and, and the arrangement pattern is, is very obvious typically and it's what uh, characterizes the different groups. Um, but now you have just some idea of the backgrounds. But what is the xylem and phloem? And you can kind of put that together. Or make sure you do. Um, and there'll be some.